So where do you start when it comes to running a pin Kickstarter? Hi, I'm Macy and I'm the artist and designer behind Molkana, a small business focused on kawaii merch. I fully funded five Kickstarter campaigns, three with enamel pins and two with my original Ida bags. Some disclaimer, there are some things I could improve on. However, this is meant to give you a guide especially if you've never run a Kickstarter project. These can also apply to non-pin Kickstarters. However, if you'd like me to make a video on running an Eat a Bag campaign, comment down below. So before launching your Kickstarter, research other pin Kickstarters and see why some succeeded and why others didn't. It's really important to learn this ahead of time so you don't repeat the same mistakes. Some things I've noticed include a project's initial goal, which we'll go over later, and the appeal of a thumbnail. Because a lot of potential backers are scouring Kickstarter and your thumbnail needs to be attractive enough to encourage someone to click on your project. If you can, pledge for something on Kickstarter so you're familiar with the process from a customer's point of view. Before running my own Kickstarter, I pledged for about two to three campaigns. Essentially, ask yourself if you would pledge for this particular project, and if not, why not? And vice versa, what about this project appeals to you? Next, think about what kind of pins you want to create. Fan-inspired pins often do well because of familiarity and can help you get backers if it's your first project, when not a lot of people are familiar with your work. Obviously, you can do original designed pins as well. Personally, for Kickstarter, I recommend creating a series of designs with a minimum of at least five pin designs. In my opinion, it wouldn't be worth it for me if I was running a Kickstarter and only had one to four pin designs, unless they're specialty pins that are three inches or bigger or just super complicated, like a ton of spinner pins, since I could easily run pre-orders on my website for a small number of more simple pins. Now, this may not be the a case for you, especially if you don't have a very strong following. For context, I had about 7,000 followers on Instagram when I ran my first pin Kickstarter. I only recommend creating more than four designs because you can only run one Kickstarter campaign at a time until you fully fulfill your rewards. And if you have the opportunity to increase the number of products you have available, take advantage of this opportunity. Plus, even if you don't reach all of your stretch goals, you can start a new Kickstarter or run pre-orders on your website for the remaining locked pin designs after fulfillment. Now it's time to design your pins. I sketch out my pins on Procreate, then outline and color my work using Adobe Illustrator to turn my design into a vector. Now I won't go in depth on this, but Becky Helms has a video that explains how you could format your pin mockup, which is linked down below. This is so you're ready to send your design to manufacturers and get a quote. Now, assuming you don't already have a manufacturer, research menus and compare their rates. Now, there's two ways in which you can do this. You could either go the middle person or the manufacturer route. I have a more detailed video on how to manufacture enamel pins, which you can watch after this video. But going to a middle person is generally recommended if you're completely new to producing enamel pins, just so you can get some guidance. My middle person at the time was wizard pins, and this was for my first ever pins, but not necessarily my Kickstarter pins. The quality was good and I personally have no complaints. However, it is slightly more expensive than going straight to a manufacturer since you're also paying for someone to talk to factory reps. For my Kickstarter, I went straight to manufacturer. Now it's time to come up with a budget for the initial Kickstarter goal. Emphasis on initial. If you're gonna get anything out of this video, it is this, and that the initial goal should be for the first pin design. Artist Geraldine Draws has a great video that I looked up at the time, which gives a formula on how to calculate your Kickstarter goal. Psychologically, if I see that a goal is way too high, like $2,000 to $3,000, and there's only a few hundred dollars pledged so far, and it's been a few days, and even if it is a long way until the campaign ends, I might feel reluctant to pledge because I have the thought in my mind that it might not be funded, which is obviously not always true. With that in mind, my recommendation is that the initial goal should be for the first pin design because it looks really good on Kickstarter if it says that your project is 110% funded, even if it only unlocks the first goal. I personally wouldn't recommend putting your Kickstarter goal as the full amount, which would fund, let's say, all 10 pin designs because backers may be intimidated by the large number. And if you unlock the first pin design, but don't fully fund it because you put your funding goal as all of the designs, you won't receive the funding at all. Even if the stretch goal designs aren't unlocked, you can always do another Kickstarter or just do pre-orders on your site. For the remaining pin designs, you should set up stretch goals, which will encourage backers to share your project so that you can unlock the other pin designs. That being said, in terms of the order of how you should do your pins, your first few pin designs should be your must unlock pins, while the higher stretch goals should be your nice to haves. 
Now it's time to create assets for your story. I'll try to keep this short since it can be a very dense topic, but if you'd like me to go more in detail on how to create your Kickstarter story assets, just comment down below and I might make a separate video. If you need examples, go on Kickstarter and search enamel pins, or you can also go on my Kickstarter campaigns to see how I did mine. So here are some things to include. About me, which is a little summary about yourself, and it helps potential backers know who's going to receive their money. Explain what is Kickstarter, since some people pledging may not be familiar with how Kickstarter works, and will be more likely to pledge if you do explain. Your initial goal slash stretch goals. This would include the pins available, the specifications, and so on. Pretty much just the details on each pin and the price at which they'll be unlocked. Freebies. Consider adding freebies as it incentivizes backers to back your Kickstarter right now instead of waiting until your pins are in stock in your shop. Some examples of freebies include phone wallpaper, stickers, prints, or an exclusive design pin, to name a few. Freebies can be instantly available for backers, such as one free sticker of choice, or available after fully funding the goal, or available for pledges over a certain number of pins, which will encourage backers to pledge for more pins. Some add-ons, which are optional but encouraged. An explanation would suffice of how much each add-on costs, and usually some add-ons, again, it's similar to the freebies. It could be stickers, pins, lanyards, washi tape, tote bags, and so on. Some samples of your past work, which could be some art pieces, stickers, pins, Basically just showcase what you've done in the past. I like to make a GIF so it'll show all of my work without taking too much space. The shipping info, which can be a list of estimated pricing for domestic and international pricing. Just make sure to note that they are estimates so backers are not surprised when the pricing is different from what is listed. A list of frequently asked questions and your social media links if you do have social media. Now it's time to set up rewards. This is really up to you and some people like to do it differently because I like to launch my Kickstarters on a Friday I like to set up my early bird deals from Friday to Sunday. Some people like to have a limited number of early bird sales, such as the first 10 pledges and so on, and it is a good alternative to encourage backers to pledge ASAP because of the limited supply. Personally, I don't really mind that, so I just like to have a time limit for this option. Possibly for larger items, now that I have a much bigger following, I might just limit the number of early bird sales since most of my Kickstarter backers do pledge within the first 24 to 48 hours now. Now consider the dates you want to run your Kickstarter. For reference, when I did have about 7,000 followers on Instagram, I was able to fund eight pin designs within three weeks. It was of a popular anime and I did have a decent following at the time. Some projects tend to be about two to three weeks long, but do consider your following and how realistic you think it would be to achieve that goal. I would say though that if you have a small following, Longer projects do not mean that you will be able to fund it. Keep in mind that backers can back out whenever they want, as long as it's before the end of the campaign. So if your project is longer than four weeks, backers might be a little bit impatient, so they might actually back out before you fund your campaign. Now, I don't have direct experience with this, but I have heard that the least successful, not necessarily not successful, months to run a Kickstarter is from January to March. Do keep in mind that late January to early to mid-February is when factories in China are closed for the Lunar New Year, so your manufacturer might not be able to start working on your pins anyway, and that will definitely delay production. Now it's time to submit your project for review ahead of time so you can set up a pre-launch page. I do recommend submitting your project for review about a week or so in advance of your launch date so your pre-launch page is ready to go. The pre-launch page allows you to get a head start on marketing your Kickstarter since interested backers can receive a notification when it's live. Plus, this also encourages them to take advantage of your early bird deals and get those backers within the 24 to 48 hour period. With these in mind, preparing for your pin Kickstarter should be a lot less confusing. If you don't want to make the same pin mistakes that I've made, watch this video on some of the things I wish I didn't do when starting my pin business. See you in the next video.